Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for Midday Kentucky. Troy is still taking a few days off, so we're lucky to have David joining us hey on guys. this Monday. Hello, David. Oh, happy Monday. Happy I feel like Monday. it's setting it off yeah. right with you. How ladies. was your weekend? Oh, it was wonderful. Just had a real relaxing, you mm -hmm. know, took a little time for ourselves. Cleaned. That's what that means. Okay. You know, as an adult, it's like, what right. you do? <laughs> That's I had right. time for me, so I just cleaned my house. Clean your house. Nice. Right. Nice. How was your like weekend, Lisa? It was good. Same thing. I just cleaned. Um, started getting the Christmas decorations out. So I had to get bring. I had to drag all the boxes from the basement up and do all right. that. I got the tree up. <laughs> Haven't decorated it yet, but I do have the tree up, so that I feel accomplished. Good. Good. Time. Good. I like it. And then, what did you do this weekend? Um, I had a pretty relaxing weekend as well. Friday night, I went to the American Cancer Society Casino Night, and oh, that yeah. was just amazing. And they raise so much money for Aww. a wonderful cause. So that was really fun to get out there. And then, yeah, I did a closet clean out. So that was my That's kind good. of cleaning, getting ready for the that cold weather. That takes time, this you know, those, yeah. Yeah. those <laughs> commitments to some of those. Okay, I've got to let go. I know. Well, I didn't <laughs> let go of any of it. I just boxed it up for next winter. So, well, some Respect. things I, I had already donated something. Sure, but sure. Whatever. I just boxed it up. <laughs> Well, we want to let you know that one of our fabulous Midday Kentucky sponsors is having an event that we wanted to tell you about that's happening on Wednesday. If you've ever wondered about Sculpture, the Anti-Aging Institute is having a VIP event to talk about that Sculpture procedure, and it's over lunch. That's awesome. You'll be able to chat with experts to see if Sculpture is right for you. So again, this lunch is happening on Wednesday. That's the 15th from 12 p.m. to 1. I want to show you some before and after pictures of what Sculpture can do for you. And during this lunch, you're going to have the free consultation at the lunch, 20% off all services and products. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And it seems to win a $1,200 sculpture procedure. So if you've ever been wondering about sculpture, what it can do for you, we know it's really tough. It's great for those spots that are just your trouble spots. You've uh -huh. been working out and working out, and you just can't lose a little bit of that belly fat or love yes. handles. Oh, yeah. That's what it's good for. Ah, uh, okay. So well, if you want to, if you've been wondering, <laughs> go over it. No pressure. Just have lunch and learn about it. And Dr. Bosch is amazing. He's yeah, yeah. Like, he yeah. is an incredible doctor. So <laughs> I think it's definitely yeah, people we'll, check it out. Yeah, yeah we keep saying sure. they make you feel like family when you come in there. But um, so the lunch, it's a free consultation lunch, no pressure, but you do have to RSVP. So call the number that we have on your screen, and you can RSVP for their lunch. There is one more All time. Right. You see their address. You can also go to their Facebook page and find their con contact information there as well. Good. But now, guys, I wanted to get the story going with, I or the this. show going with my favorite story for this Monday. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be as excited, but Lisa, you okay. can now actually have breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> yes! That's awesome! Yes. You need to take Brandy there, David. Yes, uh, <laughs> woman loves luxury. Yeah, so. this is pretty cool. The luxury jewelry store has now opened its first ever restaurant. This happened over the weekend. It's called the Blue Box Cafe. Very and It's at its flagship <laughs> store in New York City there on Fifth Avenue. The cafe is decked out with all of Tiffany's eggshell blue. It's a fixed $29 breakfast. Expensive for breakfast, but I was actually yeah, surprised. Yeah, yeah it's not like for Fifth Avenue. Wow. Yeah. And it includes options like Audrey Hepburn's famous croissant, or croissant, however you say it. Croissant. croissant. <laughs> I love it. I would love to go there. That I would so love cool. it. Would oh, you? I would totally I'm, go there I'm in sure a heartbeat. I well. love Tiffany's. Yeah. Because it's yeah. just, it's such a landmark. Like. And that, yeah, and that price point is really good, too. I'm really, yeah. I'm really surprised by the price point for mm -hmm. breakfast, so I'm like, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> I, I wonder how many proposal videos we'll start seeing happening gonna, yeah. at yeah, breakfast at Tiffany's, oh, right? Perfect. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Uh, you know how you were talking about oatmeal earlier? Yes. You know, you're having some oatmeal, and you're like, what's this and it's a diamond ring. I yeah, mean, that's a that'd be a pretty good. You got to get something for a twenty-nine dollar oatmeal. Right. That's put a ring in it. Yeah, put a ring in it. I love it. Uh, well, Lisa, you brought something to the table today. You know, we've talked about this before, and this is um, spanking and yes. children, but now you actually found some research that's come out, yeah. right? Yeah, well, you know, spanking naughty children increases the risk of depression wow. and becoming hooked on illegal drugs. Wow. This, and this is based on a new study that just came out. And I just, you know, when I read it, I don't know. I, I mean, how do you all feel about spanking, first and foremost, with kids? Um, I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah. I was spanked as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom would like hold my hand. My mm -hmm. dad had a thing called a razor strap, yeah. which I don't even know if he just made that name up to intimidate well, me. Right. Right. No, no. <laughs> it, was just like, it was just like a leather belt, you know? Right, right, right. But it happened like three times in my life, yeah. and they'd be like, hey, we love you, but you can't, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, 
I think that uh, enough evidence has shown that it really doesn't help out the kids. Mm -hmm. At the same time, um, you know, I think people do it out of frustration sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't always get that clear, uh, you know, what the parents trying to get across. The message. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for at a young age, I I'm not against it if you're using it as more scaring the child, like not right. actually hurting them, like a very young age. I don't know. I was spanked as a child as well, and I've always said I will not spank my kids, but yeah. I'm not a parent, so I don't know. But yeah. I, I don't have a problem with people doing it when it's not hurting the child, I think, more. I know. At a young age, I feel like my mom would spank me when I was, like, 14. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> she, hello, can I'm you not <laughs> Yeah. She's like, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. But, but yeah. you know, on, on a more serious <laughs> note, what they're saying is that, you know, the lines are blurred with right. what is appropriate and, and not hurting the child versus what is more damaging and, and actually physically abusing the child yeah. when, mm. it, when it comes to spanking. So, I mean, that's kind of where the story, you know, it doesn't really tap into that. All it looked at were people that were spanked growing up. They looked at 8,300 adults mm. um, and they um, had them talk about kind of their, their home life, whether or not they were physically and mentally abused at home. And they said that some 55% of the respondents reported being spanked and that it was primarily men and ethnic minorities who were most likely to have experienced it, which didn't surprise me, actually. Um, you know, girls, I guess, you know, kind of get yeah. the, the easy way out. Yeah, were you spanked as a child? I was, yes. <laughs> and, and But do, did you do that with your children? There I, you know what? Um, no, not, I mean, there might have been one or two instances, but it was very, it, it, it wasn't, um, it was very light. And yeah. it, was, it was not anything. It was where they were actually physically going to hurt themselves, like they were going to yeah. fall down the stairway. Yeah. Um, and I just, you know, for me, that, it freaked me out. And it, you know, but for the most part, what we did was the naughty step. Oh, and it, where I would sit um, Jack like or Harrison on the naughty step on the on the stairs we had a little naughty step where they had to go if they got in trouble they had to go sit by themselves um, for generally about a minute for each age that they or for each year of their age so if they were five years old they'd have to sit there for five minutes and they hated it and they would cry like it was just this most horrific ah. thing I've ever done. Did it done. work? It did. I, hope, I think it did. I hope Joy I mean, doesn't do that with the studio. I hope you know, Brandy like, doesn't do that to you. You <laughs> have a lot of minutes on that chair. Yeah, <laughs> I can see. Uh, David, uh, let's go. <laughs> go you know. but, but you know, I think, you know, even with spanking too, but you know, even though I did the naughty stuff, the thing that I, I think about with this is that once the punishment is done, I felt like I was able, you know, once the five minutes was up, I would go over and I would talk to them about what they did and why they had to sit there. Do you understand why mommy put you on the naughty step? Yes, you know, and, and you know, and explain that to them. And then, you know, let's not do this again, blah, blah, blah. And then mm. I would give them a hug and say, I love them. And so delivering the punishment, I think spanking, you know, if you're spanking a child and then just dismissing them off, I wonder if that, you know, is really kind of where the mental abuse starts to come in, where, where mm. you're just like dismissing them and, and ignoring them and not, you know, letting them understand that you're doing it to protect them or you're doing it because you love them and that they need to stop and yeah. behave a certain way and, and just letting them know that you still love them no matter what. So, so this study no, is really advocating no spanking at no all. No spanking. At any age. Yes, that's what, they're, that's what the mm -hmm. study, I mean, that's where they were going Even with when it. you're 14, Katie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, I like David's topic a lot today. This is about traveling. We all love to travel. Yep, yep. Um, but. Well, with you your know, kids just traveling the world. What's it, going on? It's kind of perfect with you too, you know, because Katie, you like going. Tr you travel hard, mm -hmm. and uh, Lisa, you've got kids, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like merging it together. Okay. Um, in a in a bid to prove that parenthood doesn't really mean the end of adventure, one couple told us how they were quitting their jobs and selling their possessions to travel the world with their yeah. two young children. Carrie and Joe Smith, who are currently based in New Forest in South England, uh, basically said, you know, they're done with living the the stuff life. Uh, they they have the idea that they have plenty of stuff. They have a nice home. They've but they're they're hungry for a little bit more. They want the adventure, and they're trying to really prove. And this was funny to me, trying to prove to naysayers that they could still hit their bucket list activities and wouldn't be just stuck in the everyday. You know, let's go through this mm -hmm. life. Because basically, I think he's an accountant and she's a teacher, 
And they're like, you know, we love our life, and but we really want to push experience. Mm -hmm. The one thing we don't have enough of is time. So, you know, I thought I'd kind of throw this to you guys because when, well, hold on, let's reverse real quick. Because when I read over where they were going and what they're planning, they're also doing a Disney cruise during their world travel. Okay. <laughs> okay? <laughs> they're going to Hawaii. They're going to Canada. They're going to, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of... Uh, more touristy areas in and life. And they're taking a year and, off, and or they, what are they doing? They said they want to go as long as they can. Oh, okay. So I was kind of like, well, you know, what? what is the point? But the point that they're looking for is freedom and experience. Right. Mm. So I thought that was cool. And, you know, his wife's a teacher, so she, she could help teach the kids while they're still traveling. Right. Um, to me, having the kids with me, because I love traveling also, would be a huge uh, undertaking. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It would. But I know people that do it uh, mm -hmm. that are in the service. Mm -hmm. I've got some family in China right now, and they s put their pictures up, like, and, you know, they just went to Cambodia this weekend. Right. Went to the temples. Mm -hmm. She has four kids. Mm -hmm. They don't stop. So yeah. I know it's doable. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think? I love it. I mean, I think it, you should always try to share your passions with your kids. If you really love traveling, I just think this is sort of a once-in-a-lifetime selling all your belongings and traveling. That's really expensive to travel for more than a year. And I'm just thinking that the kids are only four and two, so the two-year-old, will the two-year-old really remember everywhere you See, went? that's what I so was So I thinking. do like it, but I think I would wait until an older age, maybe take yeah. the whole summer. Because the younger age, I think that they're motivated because it's before they're in right. school, so right. how can you take a whole year? But I think I would rather take a few summers and travel for those consecutive months when they're older and will always remember because that's expensive. You can't do it when they're two and then a few years later take another whole year. Right. Or, I don't know. What do yeah, you think? no, I agree. I, I think that's a good idea actually doing it over the summertime and just extending that vacation all through the yeah. summer because I mean, number one, they are very young. They're not going to remember yeah. those experiences uh, as well as if they were older, you know, mm -hmm. kind of getting into the age six and above, I would say would right. be, you know, really a, a great time. And really, to take them out of school, if you went straight through for a year, I think that that would be very difficult. You know, kids are already establishing their friendships and, and their, you know, connections with other kids, and I think it might be hard to uproot them like that. But definitely over the summers, extending that out, it would be so much fun. If we could do that, I, I think it would be a blast. And, you yeah. know, when we talk about this, I really feel like they're really just doing this for themselves. Yeah, they might say, good. like, yeah, we're bringing the yeah, kids. Yeah, that's what I kind it's of think. It's going to be a lot yourself. of fun. But <laughs> right. Uh, we got to travel, so let's hit the road. <laughs> and and I'm just kind of like, man, leaving everything alone. But I admire them. I yeah. respect yeah. it. It'll be yeah. fun. Lisa, at what age do you think that your kids traveled well? And what what did you do first? <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Is that just the first trip beyond, you know, grandparents' house or something yeah. like that? Right, How right. Did, where'd you go and what age? Oh, gosh, you're going to die. I We took Jack when he was 18 months old. We had to take, we took him to Hawaii on a wow, cruise. Wow, yeah. okay. Respect. So How was yeah, the flight? And that. you know what? We were really scared about the flight. Aww. And I'm sure everybody that got on that plane <laughs> was scared as well. But it actually, he did great. Oh, I, I couldn't great. believe it. We had like, it, at the time, I think we had like some sort of a little e electronic thing that he could play with and stuff. Yeah. And he was great. I mean, everybody, matter of fact, once we landed in California, everybody exiting the plane, they were like, he did so good. They were like right. congratulating Coaching me and, and, and thanking him and everything. It was so <laughs> funny. But yeah, but they traveled you know my kids would travel pretty well mm -hmm. I you know we didn't have too much difficulty with that only if they get sick that's the problem when they're yeah. sick and you're traveling <laughs> it's not good no matter what so maybe a year wouldn't be a good <laughs> yeah, idea no, no I, nice, it's nice I try to, come to avoid home, it yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's definitely exactly nice. <laughs> exactly well stay with us we have more at midday Kentucky after the break if you've ever wondered about microblading or permanent makeup we're getting all the details from the professionals at Commonwealth plastic surgery right after the break